Hi everybody, uh, I'm Bill Sanders and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection. Uh, today what I want to do is that I want to try to find out where the bottom is. In other words, where's the base or the floor of high horology. Now we've seen the top with the Holy Trinity and other high-priced and excellent watches uh, from Patet Philippe, A. Lang, Vasseron Constantine, Georges Lecoutre, and a number of other ones. Now, the, to, today what I'd like to do is say, look, you know, I, I don't have that much money, and I want to get in to high horology, and I want to collect good watches. And so I don't want to go out and buy some junk. I'd rather buy a, a used one with a high quality but at a lower price. And so that's what I want to do today. Okay, so the first problem we have is, well, how do we determine high horology as opposed to something else? Again, the there are a lot of people who have their version of expertise. I am totally reliant on people who are recognized experts, therefore I'm always coming back to the Grand Prix d'Oral Jury de Genève. So let's take a look at the grand prizes and um, uh, the grand prize winners of a particular category called Petite Aiguille. And Petite aiguille means little hand. You have a big hand and a little hand on the clock. So this is these are watches that start under 8,000 Swiss francs. Let's just take a look at the winners, the ones who have won that, to get an idea of where the lower, lower level is. Now, we're going to start, which was a Tag Heuer uh, Carrera. And it had, it had, a, uh, it had an in-house movement. And, and I think this is this is, is important, and, and you'll see why in a second. I, okay, so we had the Tag Heuer, and after the Tag Heuer, the second one was uh, a Mont Blanc. Beautiful Mont Blanc, automatic, uh, GMT, yummy looking watch. I had the hardest, most difficult time finding the what the movement was. And so what I what I did was I, looking at the other watches of that caliber, uh, uh, not caliber, but sort of general make, they were called, uh, they were part of a star category that uh, Mont Blanc has. And they were ETA's 7754s. And I put an asterisk by that because that is what Mont Blanc was using on the watches in that general area. Whether that was actually it or not, I don't know, because I couldn't find it. They hit it. They, they couldn't. I looked all over the place for it. Now, a little later on, Mont Blanc came with their own uh, movement. And boy, I tell you, that sure was easy to find. You can go to the Mont Blanc <laughs> home site, and they have the it's it's an MB. Uh, you can tell the difference between a uh, Mont Blanc uh, in-house uh, versus a Mont Blanc elsewhere uh, by their uh, by whether or not it has MT in it. Well, uh, this one didn't, and in fact, they, <laughs> they had nothing listed. Uh, it, it's a very interesting case. I'll talk about another one of those in a second. Okay, uh, by uh, 2012, the uh, one, Zenus, we've talked about that before. Zenus keeps coming up, and they they have their own movement. The uh, uh, 4010 was the El Primero, 4010, they use that in, uh, in 2012. In uh, 2013, here's another one. Now, uh, Harboring 2 use the Valjus 7750 in that, and they said so. And But we're going to take a look at the way Harboring 2 deals with other movement bases uh, compared to some other companies. Uh, this one, they don't make any bones about it. <laughs> they take it and it's sort of say, yeah, I got a Chevy block in there, but it's got a Ferrari engine by the time they're finished with it. Okay, uh, 2014 uh, Seiko. 
one and they had their 9s86 moving in again in-house and in 2015 this last year harboring two uh, again one uh, but this time they had an a11b which was uh, in their felix model is totally soup to nuts in-house movement so uh, that's one of the things i think that's important to understand is is that if companies hide what the movement is you know it's not theirs i i can almost guarantee that on the other hand if they brag about it uh <laughs> they got, there's no doubt it's easy to find if it's an in-house movement okay so uh let's take a look uh, the uh of the short list uh, for this year for 2016 uh, has just uh, come out so let's take a look and uh, see what they have for the um, uh, for this year now what they do is that they have all of these candidates for it and then they they make a short list from that and so we're going to take a look at the short list this year and uh, first of all you have Hermes uh, Slim, uh, and it's again, it has an in house H950. Uh, uh, again, we have a Seiko again made the uh, short list with its own uh, in house movement. This time it's uh, 84 uh, BA. Now, then, we get another interesting one. <laughs> it's called the Tiffany East West. Tiffany has had movements by everyone from Patek Philippe to who knows who. I have never had a more difficult time finding the movement in this watch. This is nowhere to be found, except they say it's a Swiss movement. Well, you know, that can be, that can be anything. Uh, one thing I do know is that it's probably not ETA or any of those owned by Swatch because right now, uh, Tiffany and uh, Swatch are in the middle of a big lawsuit. So I, <laughs> that's one thing. It's a neat looking watch they got, though. Uh, now, here's a Tudor. Now, Tudor has won um, other awards in, in, the, in the Grand Prix, but after it won, it's they. Uh, Rolex, who owns Tudor, to say, "Well, we're going to make our own. Uh, we're going to let Tudor have its own movement." And so now they have their own movement. Uh, this one is the. Uh, it's called the MT for uh, Movement Tudor, uh, fifty six oh one. Another one. This one is so cool. I love it, and it, I, it's. I've heard of it, but not a lot. And so they entered a watch this year. It's called the Volcane. And they have a V10 in-house movement in there. So that's that's a real exciting uh, watch. Uh, they used to call this uh, President's Watches because I think it was uh, Ike, uh, Eisenhower, Harry Truman, uh, even LBJ had uh, a Volcane. Okay, and the final one is another Zenith. Here we see these guys popping up all over the place. And this one has the uh, 4069 in-house movement. Okay. Now, what I thought I would do, why don't we also take a look at some of the ones with their own movement that didn't make it, okay? And you have uh, one called the uh, RGM 801 uh, in-house movement, which is an American watch. It's an American-made watch, which is sort of cruel. Uh, I, I went to the American Watch Museum not long ago, and saw all of these uh, brands that are no longer with us. Uh, there's another one called um, uh, Chrono Swiss. It has its own movement. And then another Tag Heuer that didn't make it this year. And again, it's got its own movement too. All right. So uh, what we're seeing here, for the most part, we're seeing a, the, the, the watch companies that are beginning to thought of as high horology. Even at the lower price ones, if they don't have their own movement, they're not telling anyone about it. Now, so th this is, I think, sort of a base. Now, one of the interesting things that I found is that in that base, you know, where is a, a the your your floor, so to speak, your your floor of high horology, high horology, or just slapping in somebody else's uh, movement and calling it high horology. 
Well, I think there's a really interesting example we can see in Harboring too. Now they had a 7750 Val Jew in their jumping second pilot that they used. And at, at the, the top picture, you can see the Valju, and in the bottom picture, you can see what it looked like after Harbring got finished with it. I, I don't think its mother would recognize it. So there was quite a bit of work and uh, that uh, Valju did, uh, I mean, that uh, Harbring 2 did on the Valju. By the way, uh, my I have on, oh, wait, this is my Harbring 2. This is my Felix. I thought I had on my um, uh, overseas that totally reworked. Um, a Gerard Perrigo that nobody recognized it anymore. All right, so this brings up another one that I thought was a very interesting um, company. It's a German co company called uh, Dornbluth and so on. And there are a number of interesting things about this. One of the things, one of the first sources of finance that they had for their watch company was a movement patent that Dorn Blues got, which was like, oh boy, these guys got they have something unique and somebody else is buying it. It must be something. Now they started with a base of a Unitas uh, caliber 6498. And again, this is another it's owned by ETA. And the interesting thing about it is is that it was a pocket watch uh, movement. And Dorn Bruce, the elder wanted to make it into a watch and rework it and so forth until it was a watch that he liked. And they came out with the coolest watch. Um, they have a, everything is caliber 99 something, uh, 99 0.01 so forth. And uh, this one is the Dornbluth and so on 99.1 where they used as a base the Unitas caliber. But they did so much to it. They they did some really cool things. The small seconds they had they didn't like the way that the small seconds were placed, and so they moved it to the bottom. Uh, and the as you can see, the six is gone, and they just plunked the small seconds down there and made it bigger just to make it easier to read. Which I thought was a very cool idea. So I, I think that companies like uh, Dornbluth and so on. They're <laughs> just like they're like harboring. The yes, they have used a caliber from elsewhere, but they have made it their own. Okay, in other words, they have done enough to it, or they've done things to it. And, and I'm not talking uh, just about putting some perlage on it and some Geneva waves and putting your name on it. I'm talking about <laughs> moving things around and 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 changing things. And both Harboring and Dornbluth do do both of them. And so I think these companies have watches that can be included in high horology. And again, they're very reasonably priced. And I think that if we look at this, if we look at, at what they're doing, we can say, well, you know, how come Vasseron Constantin and um, Audemars Piguet and Patek Philippe, why don't you guys come out with a, you know, make it a stainless steel watch for 8,000 uh, Swiss francs and, you know, make it, make it near for the rest of us. And, but that's, the, the point is, is so what I'm trying to make here is that this little guy, this is my harboring, it keeps wonderful, wonderful time. I mean, it's, it, it really is. It's an excellent excellent piece of high horology and why not uh, do the same thing with the more expensive watches now this may not be good for the little guys but I mean but Harbury 2 is like a $4,800 brand new with its own movement uh, same thing with Zenus Zenus is another great brand that people overlook people who know about these things know about it and Dornbluth and so on, I think, is another one. And I think that uh, they're certainly look, they're worth a, 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 another look as a high horology little, sort of a little gem. Okay, that's it. This is Bill Sanders. Uh, this has been 
watch Art Sci and please, please, please leave comments. Let's say what you have to say. Let's. I'd, I'd like to get your thoughts on this and uh, discuss it. If, you, if you'd like to join the conversation, feel free to to subscribe. But we're getting up there a little, uh, so that's okay. Um, <laughs> you know, we. Uh, I'm more concerned with the discussion than I am the numbers and, and trying to get people involved in this and not just asking questions, but I, I've had a lot of really good answers from viewers. Take care. See you next Friday. Bill Sanders signing off.